back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Okay, we got a lot of you that want to weigh in on this, as usual. So we are not going to waste any time. We're going to get to you shortly and also welcome in our next guest, who put on the Seahawks uniform for a number of years, running back Robert Turbin. It's all sponsored by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises, Willard and JD. JD in for Dibs today. Glad you're all with us. Robert, we're glad you're with us. How you doing, man? Oh, man, I'm doing well. I'm getting ready for my son's sixth birthday party tomorrow. Yeah! Been watching. Yeah, man, always good when, you know, I mean, I, kids are getting older. It means we're getting older, too, so, you know. There, there's a there's a give and take there, but uh, no, nah, feeling good today. I never buy into that. I saw Asante Samuel Jr. play football last night, and I just went, no, that's Asante Samuel. I didn't watch his dad play. <laughs> I'm not, nope, nope, I totally deny the same guy. <laughs> right, I, I, I only played with his dad on Madden for so many years, right. it's almost like it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, hey, before we dive into Trey, Jimmy, 49ers, the matchup with the Seahawks, man, you played with Russell Wilson. What's going on here? What's going on with all of the ex-teammates who seem to not really love Russ? Man, you got to ask them. You got to ask them. All right, so what's your, what, what was your experience? Russ is great, man. Russ is a great, great man, great, uh, great player, great leader. I look, at, I look at, you know, I look at the human of Russ, man. I look at the things that he's done over the course of his career in seattle i mean how many things has he done over you know in the community the time that he spent with the kids at children's hospital the the school that he built uh, how about the many times that he's had his teammates over to his house booking flights and booking hotels and taking us to laker games and taking us to the beach i mean the things that real leaders at the quarterback position do whatever these other guys got going on i think is i don't know it sounds like it's attention based to me you know what i mean but uh, to me, in my eyes, Russ is not only a great football player, but a great human being. And, and Robert uh, helped bring, as you and, and many others, a, a Super Bowl championship to, to Seattle and a hell of a run. And a big part of that was was beating the 49ers. And so I, I just got to ask you, 2012 and 13 and 14, I, I mean, the rivalry, that that's really when it was born. What, what was it like being a, a, a member of the Seahawks when it was – Niners Seahawks week. I'll tell you what, it's some of the best uh, some of the best games I've been a part of, some of the most competitive games I've been a part of and you know, the great thing about it, it it was it was all love and respect at the end of it, you know what I mean? And I grew up a 49er fan. I grew up in Fremont, California. Yeah, yeah. Most of my family were Raider guys, Raider fans and I was the lone Niner fan with my auntie. Uh so we had uh, very very many family disagreements as you can imagine but uh it was surreal growing up you know as a 49er fan and then being a part of that rivalry you know frank gore being on the other side who was one of my favorite players growing up wanting to be a running back aspiring to be a running back in the nfl one day in fact i can remember exactly where i was sitting when it was candlestick park in san francisco watching frank gore play so uh, not to age him or anything like that but it just shows how special those moments were to me uh, some of the best games I've been a part of. Former Seahawks running back Robert Turbin is with us here on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, we're getting shout-outs on our YouTube broadcast right now. Irvington High, is that right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. There it is. White, baby. There it is. I love it. I love it. Well, it's good to be talking to you here in the Bay. And then when we look at this matchup, and then I know you're well aware, the dynamic that has been created is just... I mean, it's, it's quite frankly, Robert, it's tearing the fan base apart from the inside out. And, and, and the more I think about it, it's like, I don't know if a football team has ever done this. Given the keys to a young high draft pick and then kept his very successful veteran presence right there on the sideline. How would you handle that as a teammate if it were you? Well, as a teammate, if I were Trey Lance, a quarterback, or just as a teammate in general? No, as a teammate in general, because I think a lot of us are thinking, man, if this, here's the problem for Trey. He deserves time to get better, but the roster's ready to win now. And, and the veterans right. on the roster know that. So how long do you stick with a guy? Well, you stick with him until you can. Uh, and from a business standpoint, well, first of all, from a teammate standpoint, you have to, you know, there's only so much you can control. And to be the best teammate, you want to focus on the things that you can control and support whatever the decision makers are deciding, right? And you have to give Trey Lance time. You have to, you know, allow him to kind of go through 
his growing pains. And if you look at his game against the Chicago Bears, he actually played quite well. I mean, he had the one interception. He was locked in on the slant route. Uh, and the, the, the defender there just read his eyes and made a great play. But other than that, you know, aside from, uh, you know, a couple overthrows or whatever, man, he played a really decent game, made some plays with his feet and everything like that. So if you're a teammate in the locker room, uh, you're being supportive of this decision. In fact, you're asking yourself, okay, how can I elevate my game to ensure that Trey Lance is going to be successful, whether I'm on offense, special teams, or defense? What can I do more? How can I spend more time with him after practice, whether it's his receivers, whether it's his running backs working on the exchange? You saw them do a lot of read zone stuff, right? That takes practice and timing and getting comfortable with who squeezes down on the ball a little bit harder. You know, Elijah Mitchell might squeeze on the ball a little bit harder than some of the other running backs do. So it's about getting that and developing that chemistry. So you're asking yourself, okay, as a teammate, how can I do more to support Trey Lance to help him in this growth process and as far as the decision making is concerned you leave that to the decision makers my job is to do my job and that's what you're focused on as a teammate robert i i gotta put you in the position of the 49ers move on from jimmy garoppolo after the nfc championship game it's trey lance's team from february one on he runs all of the off-season program, all the training camp. You get to where it's a week and a half before the season. You're thinking, and you like Jimmy, right? You're thinking, hey, Jimmy's going to get a situation somewhere. Good for him. Hope it works out. And then all of a sudden, he's back as the backup quarterback. What are you thinking in that moment? Well, uh, you're probably surprised. I wasn't surprised. Uh, you know, I I felt like the best situation for Jimmy would be to stay with the 49ers. But you have to look at it from a business perspective. Okay, you know, Jimmy and the 49ers overall have a good relationship, so they gave him the autonomy to go and search for a trade partner himself, him and his agents, without, it, without a no trade. Usually that only happens in a no trade clause. Without it, they said, go ahead and see if you can find somebody. Now that your shoulder is healthy, it didn't work out. They weren't able to find anyone. The 49ers weren't able to find anyone. So then you eventually say, okay, let's come back to the table and see how we can iron this thing out. Because at the end of the day, what you do need is a formidable backup quarterback where you have a young guy that you just drafted the year before and, you know, traded draft picks and things like that for or whatever, or whether you have a veteran who's been established in this league. Having a good backup quarterback, a formidable backup quarterback is very important. We see teams all across the league spend seven, ten. $15 $15 million a year on backup quarterbacks. And so, okay, let's come back to the table and see how we can iron some things out. Let's establish a no-trade clause because Jimmy G still has value. So if he does get the opportunity to play, the 49ers are thinking, well, we can still get something for him instead of just cutting him loose. Robert Turbin, fantastic stuff, man. By the way, did you think at any point this offseason Jimmy was going to end up in Seattle? Uh, for a short time, I did. For a short time, I did, but the 49ers were smart enough not to let that happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. This would have been. Can you imagine this game on Sunday if that had been the case? Oh man, it would have been. It would have been a hell of a. It would have been like back to back. Uh, you know, return of the. You know, return of the Mac kind of game. Right. right? <laughs> so back to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy back in back in, in, uh, in Santa Clara, it would have been a hell of a story. I thought Jimmy G was going to end up in New York, man, honestly. Yeah. But uh, they decided to stick with, with Daniel Jones. and uh, But I think the dynamic gonna, is going to turn out fine. I, Trey Lance, I think he played well, uh, and he's going to continue to grow this season. The one thing that I would just caution the 49ers, if I was just anybody of importance, I guess, I, I just hate the, how much he ran. Trey Lance. Huh. And, and it's not so much that. It's just he's really lowering his shoulder. Like, that's not going to last very long, my man. Young dude needs to get down and slide. That's, the, that's all I got. By the way, that's a popular thought. How come it works for Josh Allen? He's a nut job out there, and for some reason he doesn't get hurt. Josh Allen is 6'5", okay, 240-something pounds. But I said the same thing about Josh Allen, too. I said, listen. You know, I, I remember Cam Newton came in the league, was doing the same thing. And what happened? He got the year six and seven, and he couldn't throw the ball yeah. as well, right? So eventually those hits are going to take a toll on Josh Allen, too. So he's got to chill. These young guys are young right now. So they recover faster. But you get to that 27-28, you know, okay, 
You know, you see Russell doesn't do it as much anymore. That's because he wants to play till he's 40, all right, at least his high 30s, all right? So these guys, you know, listen, they're still young, but they're going to have to tighten up on some of these runs here. Uh, you played running back. You know what those hits do over time, don't you? Hey, man. Uh, th- 100%. Yeah, thank you so much. Great stuff. I know we're going to have you on again as the season goes. Absolutely, man. Appreciate it. Okay. Robert Turbin, former running back, Seattle Seahawks. Really interesting stuff coming out of there. Trey.